Welcome to the uh, Public Works Committee meeting. Uh, it's, um, I'm the chair. My name is Aaron Dushku. We've got some guests here. Um, welcome to Council Pichirilli and staff and everybody. You all know each other, I think. It's a small meeting. Um, the agenda tonight is uh, new. First on the agenda is new parking meter technology discussion and informational presentation from a vendor. And we're going to hear from you, sir, in a minute. And if we have time later on, we'll get some status reports on uh, the community path designs at Watertown Square, Howard and Bacon, the Howe Park dog park redesign, and um, any road program updates. And um, staff is here to help us through that. Um, just as background, the uh, parking meter technology has been budgeted in the CIP for this year. Um, anyone know offhand how much that it was for? I can't remember. Yeah, it was split actually between two years. Yeah. Uh, this year and next year? This year and next year. It's 130000 this, this year, 186000 All right, so that's what we have budgeted. We just tipped our, our hand to the vendor now. <laughs> uh, okay. so the is the same <laughs> And then um, also, we also have a, an, a matter of a budget priority guidelines to um, recommendation to the manager to, to talk about um, parking um, rates because they haven't been increased in a long time. And um, that thing, that kind of feeds into this discussion as also just from my perspective as a counselor uh, watching the, the town and uh, the, the issues that are really of concern to our residents and, and when I'm out there with their, our traffic and congestion. And I think that um, using uh, parking demand management technologies uh, in, intelligently can really help to alleviate um, some of the congestion areas that we have in, in our, our town center, in our commercial centers, and, uh, and also continue to encourage people to use other ways of transportation and um, improve the, the like the vitality of the business districts by turning over parking fast. Uh, something I've been reading and studying a lot about. So I'm excited about the technology and what it will, what it can allow us to do as far as collecting data and manipulating those prices to, to have, make people park where we want them to park and, and have the turnover happening as we was discussed at the uh, we had a transportation forum planning forum recently where we had folks from Waltham and Newton come and talk about how they've been doing that anybody in the audience or uh, we on TV Are you, not live, not live. Not but if this if you're wa anybody ever watches this they should go check out that video um, for the transportation planning forum that we had because the, the presentation from Waltham and, um, and Newton talked a lot about that um, so before we Get an introduction from the vendor and, and the, the staff on their matters. Um, do, do you guys want to say anything to get us going? Yes. Well, first of all, I want to clarify: we are being videoed. Yes. Okay. So I'll behave. Okay. Um, it, it's not completely clear to me what problems we're trying to solve, and it would be helpful for me to know that before we get into solutions. Um, I know the CVS lot is often full. That, and people drive around. And so that's one problem I might identify. Are there other particular problems that you're hoping to find solutions to? Uh, I, for me, I think that the parking on Main Street is also difficult for the businesses there. You mean like the flower shop? The flower shop. Um, it, I mean, there's not a lot of... Or, or you, the Crown Cafe, the, uh, the talk. Um, it, and okay any other businesses that might exist there in the future okay um, the, the library is complaining that they don't have enough okay. parking um, it, the town halls have to reduce change their parking do we think it's a problem that um, par prime parking spaces are being monopolized by employees is that an issue that we're concerned about that's one of them yeah okay do we have any data s to support that well, we can say the parking now, as far as we're not town employees, like CVS employees. Yeah, I mean, I've, I've had one complaint from the Russian, and it was the Russian. I know, so, right. Uh, you know, uh, it's hard to move to our own spots. And it was basically out of not knowing that we had long term meeting, uh, long term 
Do we have enough employee parking available? No, there are actually quite a few of those spots open during the day. Okay. Um, and we did, I mean, this wasn't the best season, even though it wasn't a very bad winter. We had uh, one of our enforcement officers injured, he was out for several months, and they had a vacancy for four or five months. We're fully loaded now with the enforcement officers, but, you know, whether or not the two-hour spots and the patrons will be able to use. I see. Uh, even though they help from the police trying to enforce it. Uh, now we'll have a much better sense. Okay. Uh, All right, well, right thanks. Out. I just want to be sure we're not a solution in search of a problem. There's another, thank you for that. Uh, one other thing that is allowable under state law, you know, we have these requirements that you can only use the revenue for meters to pay for, um, the meter of fleet update and management. Is that, that you can do that. Not, that you can have a revolving fund. That's right. That's what we've we've known for a long time. We don't do that though. We do that. That's well, we, we do do that. I see. And my point is that yes, that's known. We've always used that logic. But there's also a um, a clause in that same state law that says that if you have a a commuter bus that is providing that last mile of service between that lot and MBT and MBTA node um, that you can also use the um, the revenue from the meters to pay for that or to contribute to that. To, to our to our, our MBTA fee is what no, to the know. shuttle. The oh, the shuttle. Cost of the shuttle. Okay. So that's I think what we're considering um, as we're developing. Okay. I I'll just make one other comment. Sort of, I've been trying to get up to speed on this, and a lot of the solutions, you know, are Houston, San Francisco, New York City, Boston. We are a town of 33,000 people. I don't know how many people work here. Anybody here know? Vinny? Uh, we've got about 15,000. So I just, I feel like uh, our problems may not match some of the solutions available. I hear that, that, that was, um, we heard from Waltham and they're also very interested in these. We're different Both from them. Both also bigger. Yep. Okay. So I would just make some opening uh, st uh, things too. I appreciate the material that you sent us ahead of time, uh, Aaron, and I think that the discussion is not only about the technology, but um, how some of this um, can help us set prices, uh, set rates, um, that there is a, a number of different mechanisms people have considered about um, uh, setting rates and um, how those rates are set would have an impact on our uh, transportation demand um, and if there's a there's a relationship I mean I'm not an expert on it but what I've read is that there's a relationship between parking demand and the way we address parking issues as and transportation demand and the way we address congestion and um, uh, uh, a reduction of SOVs and the like, as well as the issue of off-street parking, uh, on-street parking in our neighborhoods, uh, and how that should be addressed. So I think that while we're today, we're focusing just on the, not just, but on partially some of the technology that's available. I do think that the larger questions about what we do in terms of uh, accessing the most, the best way to access. Uh, revenue from parking um, and how to use that revenue uh, is one thing, but also how we decide to uh, look at rates and whether the rates have a, a, the the, uh, in, the imposition of rates or the implementation of rates has as much to do with revenue as it has to do with how it affects our uh, transportation demand management, right. which is what I think we. I agree. Trying. I think that's the should be actually the main focus is the, right. how it affects the how it affects our transportation network. So I have one more comment. Are you finished? Yeah, I'm done. Yeah, thank you. Yes. Um, uh, Walton has commuter rail. Newton has commuter rail and Green Line. 
you know, every time we have this conversation, I'm just, I'm thinking, okay, in New York City, there's a subway that functions. In Washington, there's a subway that functions. What we really need is not new parking meters, no offense, but the red line. Since we can't get that, all right, let's hear about parking meters. Uh, I will proceed, but I just have to say, we also have um, people who live within five minutes of Watertown Square who could jump on their bike or walk to Watertown Square also. But that's not where the jobs are. Them driving, they could take the book. them driving to Watertown Square will increase congestion regardless of whether. Why are the, if they're commuters, why are they driving to Watertown Square? I'm just talking about anybody during the day who's not a commuter who, or, or after commuting hours. Oh, that, we do have congestion in Watertown Square. I'll agree with that. All right. Well, okay. okay. Let's, 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 let's begin. Would you, kind members of our staff, please introduce our guest? Or who, who's been... Yes, this is, uh, I'm sorry, uh, this is Mark Berlin from IPS, He's one of the members on MAPC, um, did this, so a new member. Um, he went to the town of the DBW before I started here. Uh, he's been very helpful with me during the development of the capital budget estimates and things like that. So I invited him back to kind of give a, a overview of, of his product, no offense, but it's not the only product out there, you know, but it's at least gives you an idea of, I think he brought this on me with him, uh, and it'll explain the, tech, uh, the technology as well as the, you know, all the bells and whistles that come with it. And there's a lot of backgrounds available, uh, but there is, and I know technology, you know, it's an investment technology, then be able to accept the credit cards with the smart meter, uh, but there's a charge associated with that, and that would impact the rate. And there's, there's various ways to actually put an auto uh, smart meters that either are out for tonight or down the road. But at least this would be an opportunity to see what's out there. One sample example of the technology uh, of smart meters, as well as multimedia uh, space pay stations. We have in capital plan, we have five plans, and whether or not that's the right number or not. And those are for the parking lots behind CBS and liability. Welcome. Welcome. Thank you very much. Um, a well run parking program can be the third largest generator for a municipality. Uh, and that's an important consideration, and that includes both the revenue uh, that you generate from the meters themselves and also the uh, citations that are issued. Uh, but more importantly, uh, some of the points that you raised, um, it sounds to me like you may have some congestion issues, you may have employees parking on the street, and you want to manage that more effectively. Uh, smart parking can help you do that, and I'll talk about that in a little bit more detail as we go on. So um, for everybody who can take a look at these monitors here is, we're a part of it. Just to say, um, since we are being recorded, would you mind pulling the microphone up a little bit? I can hear you fine, but if this is going to go on TV. Thanks. Okay. Um, we're a uh, Verizon Wireless partner as well, and we attended a number of their IoT, the Internet of Thing um, seminars they put on around the country last year. And, and they kind of enlightened me into what a smart city is. A smart city is, you know, we're trying to have the um, water usage delivered to us, um, you know, proactively, um, instead of having somebody go out and, you know, check the every meter. Uh, we're trying to be more efficient by monitoring fleets. Uh, we're trying to be more efficient in parking. We want to know when a, uh, a meter has a coin jam so we can go ahead and, and um, you know, be proactive and, and fix that so we don't have frustrated motorists, people don't get citations, we're not losing revenue, or when batteries uh, fail, those types of things. So we're uh, one part of that smart parking. Um, according to the... Um, uh, the Institute of um, or the International Parking Institute, their definition of smart parking is a combination of technology, economics, and the customer experience converging to create a more livable, sustaining uh, city. And, and really, that's kind of what they uh, believe, in, and we also, um, you know, believe it's part of our, our creed as well. 
So some of the trends that are happening today, uh, cash is still a very important part of what people are doing. Uh, however, credit card usage is growing very, very significantly. Uh, and I'm happy to share with you a number of... I just, as the Secretary of the Committee, I wonder will these slides be available for us to... Um, I will see if I can get them to you. Okay. Uh, I'll just check with them. Um, I just wondered how many notes I should take. Sure. sure. So um, I, I will get them to you. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you. That'll help. Credit so um, cred credit cards are growing very rapidly, and I'll talk about some local municipalities and uh, time permitting. I can even show you some um, live. Um, pay by phone is an option, uh, but it's we're seeing less than 10% utilization in most municipalities, not all, but um, some of the, the younger communities with colleges, you see higher adoption rates. Um, in the, the kiosk you mentioned, there's really three types. There's something called pay and display, which Arlington has uh, of our units. There's pay by space, and there's pay by license plate. Those are the three uh, types of technologies, and, and we work with all of them, and I can talk to you about the pros and cons, again, time permitting. There's also NFC, near field communication, tap and go. Um, is that important? So if you have a smartphone, you just go up to the device and, 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 and tap, and you can make your payment uh, using that. We support that. Um, and behind all that is, is, is big data. So you want to be able to uh, take that data and mine it. And we have a very robust back end that allows that to be done. So just a, a little bit about our company. We were founded in 1994. We developed our first single space smart meter in 2005 and installed it in 2007. We became a partner with Verizon in 2013. We have deployed more wireless parking meters than all of the other on-street companies combined. We have over 12,000 installed in New England. Our headquarters are in San Diego. Now, I'm, I'm local in, in southern New Hampshire originally from Massachusetts. Uh, we both went to school together in Bentley. But um, the, the point I'm bringing about... Um, no, we <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 different years, but... Um, but who's older? Well, no. <laughs> The, the point I want to bring up is, is the fact that we're headquartered in San Diego. I used to work for a competitor called Duncan Solutions. And, and Duncan had their offices in Milwaukee. They had some um, manufacturing of the housings originally in Arkansas, then it went uh, offshore to China. They had uh, engineering in India, and their smart meter was manufactured by a 3PL in Mexico. Do you know how hard that was to try and make changes and so forth? Everybody from manufacturing to engineering to executive management to marketing are all in one building in San Diego. That is such a big relief, such a difference. Because that device over there is essentially a computer and things change. You need to upgrade firmware, um, you know, uh, software needs are, are evolved and so forth and you need to be able to have all these people uh, get together to work out any issues you may have. And we do it very, very quickly. We process eight and a half million credit cards per month. When you go from your current um, program, on average, across our 160 uh, customers or so, your revenue should increase by 30% just by the fact that you're taking credit cards. That is across our customer base, and I can show you numerous examples of that. One of the reasons is, and, and I'm guilty of this, and I'm in the parking business, I, I call on a number of municipalities, we do presentations all over the place. Now, if this is during the day, I couldn't park out back because you had, it's permit parking only, I'd have to try and find a place in the street. I'm as guilty as anybody where uh, I don't carry coins. So my, my, my choices are go across the street and maybe buy a candy bar and put some coins in, or risk not putting any coins in or whatever I have, and, and hopefully I don't get a citation. I haven't gotten a citation yet, but in many cases the municipality is lost out because I didn't put in as much revenue, uh, as much coins as I would if I had the opportunity to use a credit card. When I have the opportunity to use a credit card, I will max it out just for peace of mind. I don't want to deal with the citation potential, and I'd rather just pay that two bucks or whatever it is and be on my way. So that's why revenue grows by 30% on average. Our meters, we publish this across our customer base. We have a 99% uptime. So what does that mean to DPW? That means that you'll be spending less time um, you know, trying to maintain those meters and you'll get more revenue as a result of that. 
I mentioned that we're installed in 160 cities. Boston's one of them. They have 7,500 of our meters that we installed starting in the winter of this, you know, past, uh, in 2016. In addition to Boston, we have Brookline. We have Arlington has a multi-space meters. Um, stuff from off the top of my head now, Lexington, Lynn, Medford, um, Somerville, Plymouth, Falmouth just placed an order, Worcester, and Salem, I'm, I'm sure I'm missing some more along the way, but we have a, a lot of you know customers in the area that we can uh, let you know what their rates are. So if you want to try and understand what you know what, what's a, a reasonable rate, I can let you know what some of our other customers are doing. That might help you. So we have a, a complete suite of products from single space meters to multi space meters to vehicle detection sensors. Um, you know, we do the, the credit card processing. We have a, a great customer service team. We have mobile apps. We have the ability to pass our data to other um, companies as well. So the single space meter. Thank you. So, the way this works is our meter fits inside your existing household. So, if you have um, Duncan, McKay, or Tom, APM, these are the two episodes. We remove your dome, mechanism. We're installed in RFID tag, that's the uh, location information. Very simply, just to insert this in here. Put on our dome, lock it up, and run to the next meter. Our guys can install hundreds of these a day. So, this is just simulating the top portion of the bottom part where the employees are. Uh, but it's that easy to install. So, from a motor's perspective, they can still pay with coins like they've always done. But now they have the option of paying with a credit card. What are, what are the green and red and blue buttons? Um, this allows you to, and I can go grab my um, maintenance credit card. Um, when you put a credit card in, you can hit, it, it'll default some amount of time. So, let's say you have one dollar. Um, you can hit the plus button more time, the minus button plus time. Uh, Reps cancel, or green is uh, okay. Uh, very easy to, to make a transaction, and the process is very, very important. And so you'll can notice you, that can you uh, change what it's what the word what it says there on the screen? Oh, absolutely. This is also I'm not going to change for you right now. Because I, I was in Princeton, New Jersey uh, last week, and I did a presentation for them. Uh, change if they wanted to see it, so I did it. I'm very easy to go back and change the water count and whatever you want for information on the hours of operation, the rates, and so forth. We'll get the progressive rates in there. Um, so this is showing the blink of red light here and blink of red light here. So from an enforcement perspective, your enforcement officer can see from the vehicle most probably, or certainly if you walk down the street, you'll be able to see the status of that space in this vehicle. Um, this is a solar panel. Oh, the red says there's a vehicle. It doesn't say that it's overdue or anything. Uh, it will say um, expired if, if you want. So um, you can have it say expired. If, if but you is. can't see that from your vehicle. Uh, no, but you have to be able to see the red. Mm -hmm. The red light is going to say it's expired. Oh, it will. Okay. I'm oh, sorry. So the red means expired. So. Um, okay, that's what. This also by putting coins or credit card can change to. Green. Cards are good. The cards are gone. Yeah, you want to get more or less time in the air and, you know, stay with that. Uh, too well. Susan, you got a credit card? No, I'm not using mine. My company card is a little work. Authorize it. It should say that it's approved and that should change from the red wing to green wing. It did say approved. There we go. There you go. Okay. Sorry. Believe you. Uh, it's very easy, and then it has a very large number, you know, two hours left, and it lets you go very visually. Uh, easily, you know. And is this the technology that also could notify me by my smartphone if I'm about to expire? 
Yes, I'll get that. Yeah, we have our own app, or just work with third party apps, and then we'll have to close the door. So I mentioned we have different models for the different types of housings. The one on that is for PON. Um, the one in the center simulates the one that I have here that's a higher housing. What's PON? The one over the right would be the same number. What's PON? Pardon? PON. Oh, yeah. uh, PON is who you have or? No, no, it, it's just the brand. Oh, PON is a brand, I'm sorry. Yeah. The brand that we present, uh, that, that's out there, that might be out there. What, what do we have? What we have? Your dumplings are probably this or that. So they get a higher present, we have options for both of those. Same price, again, on to be procured off the MAPC contract. What is the price? Uh, four fifty for the unit, seven dollars and fifty cents to ship it, ten dollars to install it into your existing housing. Okay. Yeah, what so I alerted to the um, the sensors, what sensors can do is a number of functions. One, you talk about something parking uh, in this space all day long. They can pay to be in a park, they can park CBS on the point, they can put these sensors out. With this, if you have a two hour time limit, they can't do the meter anymore because this is not going to, they won't have to move the vehicle. That's one thing that's going to do. Another thing a sensor can do is provides courtesy free time. So if you want to be very uh, friendly to motors, I'm going to give them five minutes of free time if you want to learn from there. It can also be used to zero out remaining time. So today, uh, in many units now, uh, people say that the motors will drive around, keep them driving around the block to find a free meter. What does that do? It's like greenhouse gas increases, this congestion increases, by zero hour main time, you're eliminating that. So once people become accustomed to that, no longer you're going to find a spot that's it. There's no free time. It will also generate, or get back to the town, on average, between 10 to 50 percent more revenue by that zero hour feature. Again, these are all options you can choose or not choose to use. By the same logic that you explained before, that when they get to the new meter, they'll have to keep, they'll instinctively pay because they can pay with their card. I, I went to one that you must do, you said you do Brookline. I went to one, I paid for an hour, and then I realized, oh wait, I want an hour and a half. And I put in more money for the next half hour, but it had zeroed me out. So I had to start all over again. And I got a ticket, but they they fixed it for Were me. Were you using our smart meters? It must have been. Well, they also have some that are not smart. They actually just placed one today for another... Um... Oh, I had to go to a, a station. To oh, with the number. Okay, yeah. right, okay. So that, that would not have some digital So they have two kinds. Yeah. So they have our readers, they have some point only, and every year for the next three years, they're going to continue buying more of our readers until they're all in this front street. But then their lots, they're different. Lots are different, those are digital. Yeah, those are uh, do they pay by space. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. But so it's zero. You on the floor and you, you type that number when you get to it. Yeah, and you don't have to go back to your car. Right. They know what it is, but it's, if you forget and you get your you you right. cancel it out, then you have to start all over again. I mean, and it made it, once I got the ticket, I was like, oh yeah, of course that's how it worked. But okay. um, to Aaron's point, you can do something uh, with the sensors called demand-based pricing. Uh, Bob's can actually just considering when you try all these sensors in the back bay, uh, and I'll talk about the sensors a little more uh, about the freedom of time um, So that once um, paid parking is 85%, for example, the rate went from 125 to, I'm just using arbitrary numbers here, $1.50. Once it's 87 or 90% of the rate rate or more. While I'm at my space, it's going up? No, no. Uh, Mark, Mark paid. Oh, I'm there already, but Aaron's right. coming, and he's going to have to pay more. Right. So, so again, based on demand, um, they're going to have elastic pricing. On the fly. It, on the it fly. calculates that on the fly. You don't have to go the If you use incentives. If you don't have sensors, you can still do progressive rates. So, the runs for New Jersey, we're run as progressive rates. Um, 
they do progressive rates where, okay, people want to talk high speed all day long, fine. The first hour is $1.25, the second hour is $1.75, the third hour is $2.25 or something. So all kinds of things can be done with this uh, smart view. And you can, ch at, at 1230, you can say it's 85% full and you can change what it says and what the amount is. All the yeah, so you set up rules to back end, so once this happens, it'll change the rates. Oh, it'll, uh, you won't have to change it, it'll automatically do it. So it, it could, it, it could be unpredictable. Like if you had a, all of a sudden a, a concert or something like that at the park, and um, a person was expecting to go to the CVS, and the, CV, the lot was really full because of the concert, their rates would unexpectedly be higher. So if they only brought 75 cents from home and they didn't bring their credit card because they know the rate it costs 75 cents, they would be out of luck. You can also do it based on, on zones, have different you know, parameters within zones. Yeah. So, you don't have to do it. Yeah, yeah, I know. So that we throw the whole the entire city. Right. My suggestion so, is if you're having a concert, you might want to consider an event based price. So a fixed price to attend that event, to attend that concert. Okay. Just another you know, way to program this and use it. Yeah. yeah, the zones we talked about zones at the at the the um, transportation plan. I think too. right. Okay. Um, so we have three different types of sensors. Um, my personal preference for is the one that I'm showing you right here. So normally when we ship a, 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 a meter of the dome, you don't have this part of the hole. It looks like that. This is a sensor. The sensor is either on the right hand side or left hand side in relationship to where the space is. This sensor is radar based, highly accurate. It actually learned over two weeks the parameters of that parking spot before we even started zeroing on time. So it's again very, very accurate. So it's understanding what is it and what is the space to be on it. We also have home on the sensor. So there might be some configuration that, um, like found, for example, they have the meters up against the fence that people can turn around. Um, so the perspective meters um, uh, like that, the hang like that, the streets here, and I couldn't put a dome on a sensor there. However, we will be able to use home on a sensor those environments. So that's an application I'd work for that as an alternative. The third option is in ground where I call them puck sensors. I'm not a fan of that. There's some kind of DVO because I'm somebody else that they can up the street or you have a water break or something and tell all of a sudden the sensors don't work. So maybe so the sensor could also tell us whether or not our parking enforcement program is how efficient it is. If we know that the, this, they can compare the data from the sensor, this spot's been occupied for this much time and it's only been paid for for this much time across your whole fleet, you can say. Well, I'll think it's up further. If you use real-time reporting with the sensors, we have a map. And you can click on zones. It will actually tell you that the space um, Status, whether it's paid uh, or paid, yes, it's a vehicle here. I'm sorry, yeah, it's, it's paid or paid, it's a vehicle here. So if you really want to be efficient in your enforcement, you can actually look at that back end. Uh, so they don't have to walk around and look at every light in the parking lot. They can just sit in their, at their desk or in their car. In the car, they had access to a web page, yes. So if you didn't have to actually give a person a ticket, you could. You wouldn't even have to send a person out. You could just send them a bill. The, the driver. A bill. Well, we don't. We don't know what the space. I mean, we don't know what the plate numbers or anything. You have to actually put a citation on the vehicle to let them know that. I think You're not that smart. <laughs> <laughs> Room to grow. Yeah. No. Um, so for single space meters, we have a smart collection system that has a canister that is the same price as the canisters you buy today, thirty dollars for standard. Um, Canister or 35 volts for a high capacity canister. And the way it works is I take the canister on the bottom part of this, I go over to my um, smart collection trolley, I put it in, turn it, the coin's empty, it uses Bluetooth low energy that each um, canister is identifying each meter. That's automatically clearing out that canister so no, no more. Uh, Points that canister and sending that information to that end. So, from an audio perspective, Joe's going to love it. Right? No more, and you'll know where every point is. Not only do we know where every point is that's in there, we know what are going in the other points. So, if you have an invalid point like a chunk of cheese token or whatever, we know that we count that, even though it's not a valid point. Once you don't uh, take, uh, say, quarters only, you put them in the diamonds, you don't accept them, we're still tracking that as a, as 
a point is going to the back end as far as the point of passing. Also, for the adjudication stuff, if somebody receives a citation, set up in three quarters or yes, in three quarters, um, and their, their eyesight um, is not good, they put in three nickels, they got a citation, they get a time really run out. You can go to our back end and take that poll number, put it in a date range, a time range, and actually look at every single point that went in so you can prove that no, they put in three quarters, they put in three nickels. That's how powerful the system is. That's huge as far as. Our timing goes, be able to know exactly what's on the machine, versus what's been deposited in the bank. Uh, really so the next thing um, we'll talk about is the, the kiosks, and I kind of alluded to it before. Um, Dennis's group saw our kiosks. Kiosks for some people can be intimidating. Now, Susan, I think you saw the group of mine. It might have been not as intuitive as it could be. So our kiosk allows you to pay or put the transaction money that you want. Uh, others are very rich. You have to place them put the five in certain order or cast them. And especially you know, a lot of people and somebody who's not you know, technically proficient, if you will, uh, they might get a little nervous and... Well, I just don't go to Brooklyn very often. Right. So that, that's how you can start. So when I we take a lot of that fear factor away, um, we allow, so my friends is okay, I think, credit card, the credit card first, or put it in, then you'll select the property to increase the increase amount of time I want from default, just like that one Then if it's a pay by space, like you have for a client, it'll ask you for the space number, and then you'll pay, and then you'll go uh, You might read the instructions that says, okay, enter your space number, that's the proper way to do it. Enter your space number, that's going to prompt you to put the coins in your credit card, and then put your transaction that way. So we call it Telesense. We help you with the transaction the way that you think. Uh, very, very huge. Mm -hmm. There's also the uh, I, I, the Cambridge Public Library has, I guess it's similar to Brookline. They have ones where you don't have to go back to your car. You just push in the space number and and pay. Right? Yeah. 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 Okay. Our, our unit is. Um you know, that's people who like it because it's very easy to maintain. Actually, I won't put it too much detail, but then you have a printer, a gold paper, a battery, a uh, coin validator, and a main board, if you will, over here, which has the LCD on it. Um, down below is your vault, and you have a separate key for that, and you open that door, and then you take out the uh, coin canister, and you actually swap them out. And that's how you do your collections. And the the person checking the meters must have a, a gizmo that gives it data about who's paid where, what, when. Um, the gizmo uh, is a smartphone. I'm going to get to that. So okay. thank you. Okay. Um, I'll just mention that we have upgrade kits for our competitors' products, and one of the reasons we do that is, is we don't have a lot of components in there, so we can pretty much retrofit most of the other competitors. Other municipalities like that uh, because they're spending a fraction of the price of buying a whole new meter, but they still have the outside, the, you know, the steel cabinet that we can preserve that's, that's green and, again, saves money. That's all I want to mention there. So our back-end management system is huge, and time permitting, either now or I can come back or, you know, whenever you want, I can, sh I can show you some data live. But essentially, it allows you to have access anywhere, not just in this building. As long as you have the proper credentials, you can access it from your home. And based on your roles, um, you know, maybe Joe uh, only uh, will allow some of his people to have financial access. Dennis might give his people the ability to have access to repairs and the technical audits. Somebody else might want to be able to uh, be the administrator and be able to add users or delete users as, as somebody uh, comes into the town or, or leaves the town. So again, rules-based security and there's different rules within the system. We, I think um, Susan had mentioned, you know, can I pay for my phone? So we're launching our, our own um, Park Smarter app that works on an Android and an iPhone that is optimized for use with our single space meters. And shortly thereafter, it'll be working with our multi space meters. But right now, uh, August 1st, it'll be the single space meters. I won't go into a lot of details about the optimization of the batteries. Um, 
uh, in the brevity of time, but it's designed to maximize battery life. The other vendors, if we work with a vendor like a Park Mobile, all great companies, um, we need to keep our modem on more to be, be able to receive those transactions so it's not as efficient and the batteries will have to be replaced more frequently. So you do work with other smart phone based We do. Yep. You can either have it show up on there or not because they have their own app and you can just look at that. So if that's blinking red, I could look on my app and see was it paid with a smartphone app. So that's there's two ways to go. We can always talk about that at some point in time. Do you know which is the You know, I think that Park Mobile probably has the biggest install base, but there are other companies like Passport that seem to have more functionality and seem to be growing a little bit more rapidly. But, you know, there are a number of them out there, and I think it... Yeah, I wasn't sure. There's in the region, you know, it's just interesting because you can go to the MBTA and there can be one vendor and they'll come here and you right. have a different vendor than the other yeah. I think at some point there'll be some consolidation in the market, but... Uh, let's see here. So I want to just talk to, um, Susan, you asked about the gizmo. So my gizmo, this is the main screen. And I can look at, um, find nearby goals if I'm a, a diagnostic person, you know, tech or whatever. I can uh, uh, look at faults. I can do enforcement. So from fault perspective, when I click on fault, it will now bring you to another screen. And this is showing me point faults, card faults, low battery, non faults. I can drill down on that. I can right down to zone, right down to be or whatever else happening. Um, I can also take a look at the, um, so if I'm in call, look at the call, it's going to be a firmware version of my ETAG. Um, I can click on recent transactions, and give me all the transactions that have over a some period of time uh, chronologically. So I can still look at the transactions that have from the call. On, on any given meter? On any given meter, yes. Um, the enforcement. This is showing me, I only have green and red, but the colors could be green, red, and yellow. Yellow means it's going to expire in five minutes or less. That's nasty. This is you the time, the time remaining, and it's, it's cut off a little bit by through, um, we're using our uh, pay by space version, we have a space number in there, we'll pay by plate version, we have a plate number in there as well. So a lot of information you can do right from your uh, smartphone. So when I contacted Brookline to complain about that ticket, they could check up if I was telling the truth. Absolutely. Hmm. Uh, I was. Pardon? I was. <laughs> <laughs> um. Let the record state. <laughs> yeah. We recently launched a My Parking Receipt website. So if you go to myparkingreceipts.com, anybody that has IPS meters in, in New England, the 12,000 meters that are out there, you can put in the first four digits and last four digits of your credit card and pick a date range and, and get all your receipts. You can actually sign up and get an account and have the receipts emailed to you automatically. That's nice for a couple things. One is um, sometimes settlements don't always account on the business both to have credit card settlements. So you might just be saying, hey, you know, you try my credit card twice for parking. I only parked there once on Friday. And they go to Joe and Joe says, I don't know. Or if you have the My Parking Receipts app, it's a transaction date. That's different than seven days sometimes. So you say, okay, go to this website and look. It's all I have to park on the third day I park on Friday. Okay, thank you. I got another way to, to make your job a little bit easier. Does your data, is your data ever wrong and the person's right? I don't believe so. I mean, I, I you know, I, I don't know how it could be, but. Okay. We can also pass information to other apps. The, the map calls it is part B. Um, so if you have a real-time sensor uh, reporting enabled, you can pass this to that company and you'll be able to see any spots that you know, have a sensor that are available. So once you get away, you're a little more efficient. However, I'm a little concerned about that. I don't want to get right out of the citation for pecking. So you have to pull over the side of the street to make sure that, okay, there's a couple spots up on Main Street or whatever. I, I also, it seemed to me, like, what if Aaron and I both find out at the same time that spot's free, or and he gets there a little first? I'll be really mad at him. I mean, that could happen, right? 
It's like Pokemon Go. <laughs> Which has had all these problems. Um, so credit card processing, I mentioned that we process a lot of transactions. We've never had a breach yet. We're um, PA DSS and PCI uh, DSS certified at the highest levels. So uh, if you do become an IPS customer, we have not had a breach yet, and you know we, we take it very seriously. Customer support uh, is phenomenal. Uh, starting, I think it's next week, will be, I think, maybe 7 a.m. Uh, East Coast time. Even though we're a West Coast company, um, will be 7 a.m. East Coast time for the DPWs that get in early and you know have some questions on, you know, I got a coin GM, how do I repair it kind of thing. So I, I would um, suggest if you want to learn a little bit more, if you go to our website, there's resources, click on the resources tab, and there's case studies, both brochures and video case studies. One of them is New Brunswick, uh, talking about their progressive rates. Another one is um, University of Minnesota, talking about the med-based parking, and how easy it is to, to, to go from, you know, how we park to a med-based parking. So those are the types of things you can learn. Uh, other these guys have gone from no program to a program like this, and how much they did, and how it's helped them manage their parking. Um, I, I think that's it for the presentation portion. I, I don't know if you have any other questions or if you want me to go and show you somebody's back end live, I can do that. It's completely up to you. I think, um, well, um, any questions from the committee first? Uh, no, not at this point. For me, I think that there's a lot of options, and I, and I, I know that you guys have talked about those and considered some of them, and each one involves a, a, another plateau in pricing. And uh, when I, I think I was at the meeting actually when you presented at DPW, at least one of the meetings, and we, and I remember we talked a lot about um, the, you know, the cell phone. There's like a little cell phone engine in here, right? That's that's talking, and you pay a, a rate for that multiplied by how many stations you have. You've got. Um, Electricity. I mean, there was there was electricity. No, maybe not electricity, but there was some. There were several other. Oh, credit card fees. Credit card fees. So you got. You're not just you know paying the the town, but the credit card visa is taking a piece off off the top of that. So there's a lot like the, the accounting of it all, and each new Bell and Wessel that gets added eats into our bottom line as far as the revenue goes. And I, and I um I think that the analysis of that is something that. We owe ourselves um, some real thought on, you know, and uh, I don't know where we, we, you know, what what we're looking at as far as the like, guidance from the com committee on this. I think I I know what I'd love to see in Watertown Square, and I think I'm learning a little bit about the, the different options that you have. And I think I, I know what would be convenient for me and what I think that the municipality could use. But you know, Susan raised some good points about you know. The, the scale of our town and how much, how 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 much benefit are we going to get from these, given how much it's going to cost? And I'd, I'd like to know, you know, what parameter, what variables you use in coming up with the estimates on the CIP, and and what does that mean as far as our revenue goes? I, I, I don't know, that that might be a pretty deep analysis. Yes. Well, it seems to me that it's great to know about these options. The hard part is figuring out what makes sense, where you're going to put them, how you're going to structure it, and. I wonder if that conversation should wait until we have a transportation planner on board, which hopefully won't be too long. Um, it seems like that this is a transportation planning issue more than a DPW issue. Or even more than that, maybe like a consultant, like a, like a parking, like I think some towns have done parking demand management studies. But would that be part of the... Yeah, managed by the consultant. One of the things that was not about this one particular issue is that it sort of falls in this really perfect place that not a lot of departments really you know, the DPW sort of handles the maintenance and the treasurer is doing the grades and the police are handling the enforcement and you have all these traffic planning variables. So um, that's sort of been one of the issues that we've been trying to evolve right with that each of us have our own set of problems or you know, this Part, is, right. interdepartmental is great. Right. Um, so Yeah, what problems we can solve with this 
it doesn't seem like there's a way we could move forward. I mean, unless there's some crisis with the current parking meters not working, it, it doesn't seem like it makes any sense to move forward until that person's on board. And would you agree? I, I think it would, for us to, to make a decision on what to do would be foolish. I mean, it, like we just don't have the time or the, the information we need to do that. Uh, I'm glad that we, that we all saw the presentation so we know what the options are, and I think I think, mm -hmm. I think that specific recommendations from the last two capital improvement programs was that this issue is going to be brought to the public work subcommittee for policy guidance. So there is still some of these bigger macro issues about do we even want multi space meters? You know, do we want to do a pilot at first? You know, or and do we want to be single heads all the time? And, and I would say that since that referral, you know, we're doing a lot more with transportation planning. And so it becomes not just a matter of, of how DPW is going to arrange them and how the money will be collected. It, it really fits into a larger conversation that we are having. It, right. I think maybe what, if there's one thing we could do, is we, it, we could kind of put that on the, the punch list for what the, we want the transportation planner planner to tackle, at, you know, with some priority. You know, mm -hmm. given that it's in all these mm -hmm. all these all this guidance that we're giving the manager already, as far as the CIP and the, mm -hmm. uh, the budget policy guidelines, let's get let's get them. in if it means that we have to allocate some consultancy consultant fees for this transportation planner to to manage, um, I think we should do that. Uh, we also have a lot of data from a lot of municipalities, so if you want it, uh, uh, I can help you seriously. So you can consult. You would, you know, local communities or you have to talk about our rates every 75 cents an hour in our cities. Um, next, the next month, uh, the population next month, uh, we have X amount of meters. I'll try to go to our database and find out some of that. I can sketch you some data, so it would help you maybe plan a little bit more uh, accurately. You certainly can call it or you know, say so that it works. Well, <laughs> I'm interested in the pieces of the puzzle that help us figure out um, how how we can do the parking situation in, in such a way that it um, fits into the overall TDM, um, uh, our transportation demand management. I mean, that's the pieces that are interesting to me. So the zoning, how you can do the zoning issue, how you can change rates, um, those are the the pieces of the of the puzzle that to me are important, and if it might be worth the extra expense, um, if we can um, use the meter, use that tool as one of the tools in the toolbox of transportation uh, management, demand management, um, uh, and, and it seems like it has some of the, the key components that you're key. Um, Elements that you could use to do that. It absolutely can, especially with the sensor. You'll get analytics about, you know, right down the meter, you know, what, you know, what's this part of town look like? Right. How busy is it? And then you can run reports on time of day. You know, how busy is it from, you know, what Extra. Uh, years, you know. And what's the price? What you want? And what should it be at that point? And what could it be at a different point? And, and you know, do you want to, during the day, is it better to have a lot more on street parking in neighborhoods and then and in the evening it's not right so that you, um, you shut them down um, and you have them up and then you shut them down. Um, but it, 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 it would make, you know, I mean, in ter I also think it's, though, though it's not a high pri it's not the priority. It should be up there, though, as one of the priors is a revenue generator. Um, and so if there's ways to maximize the revenue by, by uh, programming these in such a way that we could uh, pay for some of the installation and pay for some of the, the upgrades. I, I also think that if we can get some of this money based, based on the state law that says that you could use some of it uh, for uh, to the purchase or leasing of a computer commuter shuttle um, to take you from a particular area, a particular lot, to the most available transportation to the bus 
um, or to the commuter rail, or to the commuter rail. Um, that would be helpful. So that it, I agree with Susan because the more we speak about it, the more it's integrated to the planner, to the chancellor state. So that if and when we get this TMA in place. Uh, and maybe only the first year it serves X and Y around Pleasant Street and, and Arsenal Street, but in year two, it may service other parts of town and it would be helpful to be able to pay for that other services with some of the revenue from from this. Now, of course, there's, there's only so much revenue and everybody wants their fingers up, but, but you know, we keep that option open. Um, so that's what I'm interested in is, is uh, you know what, what? How we can use this uh, to to uh, um, to further our transportation demand plan? I think that um, I, I think that managing parking, um, as we've just discussed, and as we've been hearing from the di different people around town and the experts we've consulted with, uh, is definitely part of a, a greater the greater TDM goal. Of reducing SOB, SOB use in, in the city, but I think that there's there's also like a kind of a, a smaller kind of framework of planning that goes that goes within just the parking that that has you know some specialization like that we might want to focus on a little bit with respect to the meters and the parking strategy. Um, so I think maybe we would we should th consider. Hear from you guys also how you feel about it. Um, you know, engaging some parking demand management um, expertise. Well, Mr. Berliner is saying that he can consult around this. I mean, I think he's saying you can provide data. No, no, no. He's not. He's well. He's saying that, but he, if we define what what our goal, what we want to achieve, he can help us get the technology that's going to match it. I mean, maybe something more is needed, but maybe the transportation plan we're hiring in addition to Mr. Berliner can solve the problems. I, I'm not ready to jump to, I mean, is there a specialty parking consultant that is separate from transportation consultant and we need a sub-specialty yes. consultant? Uh, yes. I, I just think that we need a, I, I think we yeah, need how a, how do you know that? I'm just joking. I, I think we need a parking demand management um, assessment um, to help guide us on some of on some Isn't of that what we're getting? No, not but not no. We're not we're not asking for that. No, no, no. Isn't that, aren't we in the process of creating a, a traffic demand assessment? Yeah, we're not creating parking. That's what the transportation that, plan that will do. But he's saying specifically a parking right. assessment. Yeah, uh, transportation demand management. All the measures for reduction in SOVs and, and the reporting mechanisms that we're building in the ordinance and we're done with Athena Health is. Different animal. Different. Yeah. Well, okay. Again, it's something that I don't. Once we have a traffic consultant on board, if that he or she says, "Well, you know, it, this is too big of a project. I need a sub consultant." Okay, but I don't. I don't, I don't feel qualified to make that decision. That's fine. Yeah. yeah. Okay, well, I don't, maybe we don't make the decision now. That's okay. But uh, just to clarify one thing that you said, you said. Like, do does IPS offer that kind of consulting where you where you could come to Watertown and look at our parking situation and our and our, our fleet and our zones and all that, uh, hear from us about what our concerns are and say, uh, oh, you you need to do this, this, and this. So we don't offer any formal uh, studies. I mean, there are companies like uh, you know, Walker or uh, Nelson Nygaard. Um, oh, there is. That's their living. Uh, we're certainly with our. There, there's another thing you might not know. There was a Watertown Square parking study done, I don't know, maybe 10 years ago now. It was terrible. Um, Steve Corbett uh, really it was, was very dissatisfied with it, and it was kind of tucked away. But it does... And why it was terrible was it sort of defined Watertown Squares from the Boys and Girls Club to uh, Starbucks and made all parking as though it was equal. But, and if, did, if did you follow that, was that clear? Yeah. In other words, if you're going to Starbucks, you would say, well, there's a parking space available at the Boys and Girls Club, which you would, which, you know, just isn't going to work for people. And uh, I think it led to some of the decisions about how to reallocate employee parking at town hall but any but 
We don't want to use them. We what? We don't want to use those consultants. We don't want to use those consultants for sure, but we do have some data. It's a little dated, but not that much has changed in Watertown Square since then. So we do know some things about who parks where for how long, et cetera. I do too, and I bet Dennis does too. I'm looking forward to these minutes that are coming. I always try to make well, them I do entertaining. Think that, <laughs> that, that we could make a motion. I mean, if, I mean, I, I'd sort of separate out what Mark has been presenting to us. I, again, um, uh, so we've got some information about technology now. We got some information about a product. Uh, we have some costs for the product, and you all have the details and what each. I don't want to. I'm not trying to say this in a derogatory way, but each bell and whistle costs, right? And these are very valuable bells and whistles, particularly if they provide A, more revenue, and B, more planning tools, give us more tools to plan, uh, to use for planning. Um, but I think that is what we did today. But I do think that, that we might want to consider uh, uh, looking into or asking the uh, I don't know whether we stop at this point and wait to see what the transportation planner gets hired or do we um, ask uh, Steve and his crew to um, look into some consultants who do traffic uh, parking demand studies or I mean it'd be worth to get more data not just the kind of data that Mark provides but more idea of, of how this fits into the larger picture. Yeah, I like the idea. Maybe we just if we if we made a request to the department for some parking demand management study or, or you could planning. Table it. You could table it and you could just direct Joe and I to go back to Steve and then put it on another agenda just so we can go back to Steve and give us the opportunity to say Steve is sort of Based on my minutes. I think it feels like we want to try to do, we have two avenues here. We have that, right? And then we have the real, the other issue, and I, they, they merged at some point, but um, I'm sorry, I forgot your first name. Oh, Dennis. Actually. No, I know Dennis. I forgot yes, Joe. I'm sorry. The, the Joe has some. It's only tactical. <laughs> <laughs> he, he purposely <laughs> is that, that uh, we, we do have this desire to uh, deal with rates and to get on to fi figuring that out, right? Now, there, there is a relationship because at least in this, we invented parking that you told us to read, Aaron, um, that rates are only one, there's a number of ways to determine your rates. Uh, but we do have to do that. And this, this tool may be uh, one of the pieces to do that, right? So we've got these two, Two avenues that we're trying to pursue, and I'm not sure uh, where they, they merge, but I'm not exactly sure where they merge. Well, um, here's here's one thing that occurs to me that we're not going to change the rates bef if we're going to get new technology. We're not going to go around and change make changes in the meters now because that wouldn't that would involve that would be labor intensive to go make changes in how the meters are set up now. Right. But so we're not going to we wouldn't want to do it twice. But, but right, but so you'd want to decide about the rates in relationship not only to the product because you got to pay for the product, but in relationship to the traffic demand study, uh, uh, the transportation demand. So that um, we we got to I, I don't so those are the two th variables to me, and and I'm not exactly sure how to pursue that. But I think I get your trip. You're saying that. Um that the rate, you can't set new rates until you've got the data on the, on the demand. Right, and you can't set new rates until you figure out whether the tools that you're gonna, how much the tools you're gonna be using cost. Because you need to in some way cover some of that cost. Even though there's 180, 137,000 put out for this year. Right, right. That, that's for capital as opposed to operating. Right, that's for capital, so. This, so for, this is an ongoing, if, if we buy all 388 smart meters that we need under the initial scenario that we have a capital plan, we're talking about 55,000 a year 
an annual cost, uh, which is twelve dollars per meter per month, to make them super smart. That's okay. all the bells and whistles. Um, so that's about fifty-five thousand. So you would need that covered in the rate. In the rate. And you would also need, you know, depending what we estimate as far as credit card use. Yep. It's an estimated at 22 to 25 cents, so the 25 cent figure per swipe. And whether you need really, it's not a percent. It's it's the percents in that 25 cents. It's 13 cents and then a percent, depending on what type of card you use. So, and, and that's the trouble we run into with real estate taxes with my credit card because taxes are committed, so we have to add that on. Then we can do that as well. So we can have convenience fee, but it, yeah, and nothing to run, you know. What you do on parking tickets, it seems to me. We do, we charge a 3% on a parking ticket, but that's a $15 charge. But basically, it's a per transaction, right? For a long time, per transaction. No matter what it is, if it's, if it's a four dollar transaction or twenty five cent, gotcha. there's a twenty five cent either compete to be over to cover that cost within the rate structure itself. So I will that more or less nuts and bolts. I do want to talk to Mark and make sure I'm, I'm clear on all the nuts and bolts to make sure I'm not missing anything. Almost like back in the day my first time around here when we said the water of sewer rates. We had a really full of water and made sure we accounted for everything um, so that when the rate was developed, you know, there's different reasons for for different structure of the rates. Mark was mentioning you could have on a credit card a minimum one dollar. If let's say it turns out that either an hour is either seventy-five cents or a dollar, automatically we use a credit card at minimum. Is, is one hour, one hour for a period. So you automatically covered your 25 cent charge for that credit card. Um, and then you also then gain extra revenue from public ads, you know, the, the resetting the clock and so forth. So then I think the first year is kind of, I think you're going to be probably looking at the rate, not as often as the water or sewer rate, but at the beginning there's going to be assumptions made have to be reevaluated over time, uh, but we'll try to narrow that down. So, do you, based on what Tony was just saying, he, he, you know, about the cart before the horse and which came first, chicken or the egg, kind of conundrum. I'm kind of, I'm kind of stuck with here because, you know, all these great benefits you can get as far as transportation planning and traffic uh, congestion mitigation from a good management, uh, parking demand management, come could come after you get the data. So considering for that fact, let's say we just, you know, we, let's take that for granted, okay? We're gonna do all that stuff once we get the data. But to get the data, we gotta put these things in place. Now you're, have you, have you done like some analysis on, you know, you don't know what all the packages that gave you that estimate. Have you done what analysis? What the rate would have to yeah, what the how much the higher the rate would have, have to be? Have to be at least a, a minimum of seventy five cents an hour. More? No. I got only fifty cents an hour. Yeah. So you would it have to be at least seventy five cents an hour. That's bare minimum. Yeah. Because not all the other charges are gonna be credit cards and that's under the philosophy of credit cards go to the maximum. So but the recommendation I believe is a dollar an hour charge. That's so by raising the rate 50 cents uh, by 50 cents for every parking meter that we have, what we, we would get all the all these this technology and enable us to start with that kind of planning. If you go from 50 cents to a dollar, yes. But, and then, but the other piece to this, and I think that's what they've been trying to say here, is that you got to be aware of public that you clearly do this by just money, you're going to have some pushback uh, on it. So that you, you got to think about how to do this uh, that might be, that might also start to pull in some of the transportation uh, parking and transportation demands uh, stuff, for example, on zones. So that maybe it, it goes up um, 
you know, average is a, a dollar an hour, but f the way we set it up is that in closer to town, it's a dollar fifty, um, and it's uh, or a dollar seventy-five, and then a little bit further out, it's a dollar a dollar, so that we kind of use some of the planning tools, and, but still average out to the buck per yeah. hour. I, I think that. Hold on a second. I think that's. Yeah, we do that, but the but the idea of that of the whole procurement and, and replacement, according to what you're saying, is to is to go to achieve those planning and, and benefits and the mitigation benefits. We, we don't walk into this thing saying we're just doing this for the money. Right. That's what the article I think was saying. That's what it was saying. Make sure everybody out there knows we're doing this. You know, this could be the first step. It right. looks like you're just going to like zap everybody's parking rates, and they're going to be angry about that and they're going to come and say, oh, they're just trying to get our money. Well, hold on. That's not what we're doing. We're not just trying to make money for the town. We're trying to set these things up so that once we get the data, we have this other whole suite of planning tools coming that in. That will lower congestion, that will make parking easier for different places. Right. right. Th those are all the benefits, but you can't do those benefits without some data. But it first comes in as a rate increase. Right. Yes, committee member, and then you, Benny. Could I mention one thing real quick? Um, you raise the rates and you're expected to push back from the community. Uh, one option is either tokens that you can offer at a discount. So you can pay value a dollar and they buy a discount. Or smart cards. And smart cards we provide for charging stations as well. So you can have a grant for the town of town, see on so forth, and they can get a discount. So although you're raising the rates, um, you still allow people to do that. And then uh, paying the convenience fees with the credit cards, you save that as well. Just a thought. Okay, just one smart card. You Were you buying a smart card? Uh, the cost, and these are rough numbers now, I want to say $2.50 to buy a smart card. Um, you have to buy, I think, a thousand minimum, and then, you know, they can be uh, branded with whatever you All want. Right. And they can be recharged. There's a recharging station. Um, but right, hold, on, hold on the smart card for a second. Oh, there's um, senior passes, too. Right. There's a problem. Okay. So, um, I think your point's well taken, that if we raise the rates, we can get the data to do the planning. I think that was that was well put together. Um, so that makes sense. I, but I really think at this point, we should be thinking of this as an informational presentation and ask the departments to go back and have further discussion and make some recommendations to us. And so that would be my recommendation. And also about specifics, sort of in response to Tony's idea about having it more expensive closer to town. When I have trouble, in particular, parking at behind CDS is in the evening when the rest, where there's a lot of restaurant activity. And I would favor something like a $2 charge to park for evening parking, not, you know, for two hours or something. Well, I guess that's a dollar an hour. But, you know, it, it, you might want to think about how to do that. Right. Did you want to make a comment? Uh, yes. So uh, I think if it's really, the committee may be better served by splitting this issue in half. Um, thinking about the municipal lots with the kiosk basis, <laughs> perhaps first, and then trying to come up with some policy guidance on that, and then thinking about the on street meters, which is a whole uh, another complicated issue, sort of, sort of splitting, but those are really sort of two sentences. Right. So, so what maybe, maybe what we need now, I'll just sort of get that sort of forward overview, I think it may be helpful to say, maybe ask the, the administration to say, well, if we were to implement kiosk based on parking in municipal lots, um, you know, sort of what's the layout? How many stations were they located? What other ancillary installation costs for electricity or whatever you know, would be needed? Uh, how would you, what features would you need? Or what features do you, do you think the town would need? Uh, it's a huge range of features, as you said, bells and whistles. You know, what sort of the minimum set of features we need to make this work? Uh, put together like a little performer of, uh, uh, you know, what do you think the rate structure would be to sort of cover that cost? And then also think about, you know, sort of looking sort of the worst as the hours of operation. I, I think sort of how much you charge, like demand management and stuff, is, is a capability that's there that we don't have enough data, information to sort of 
make those kind of decisions out of the street of the basin. Plan that we're at five stations, kiosks here, located here, where we run underground cottonwood, electricity, lights, and this and that. And you know, what's going to talk about that? I think it's, it's too early to make some decisions. We need you need to have this, the administration go and uh, sort of do a preliminary layout and then come back. And then you have actually something that's sort of like, well, okay. I, I think that's a good that's a good point. I, I'm a little concerned though that that you know if you increase the rate at the municipal lot, then you, you kind of defeat the purpose of the demand manager, which is to pull the pull the cars off the street. I like I like having them all working together. You know, it, you might force everybody else everybody down to the street if you've got higher rates in the, in the lot. Oh, yeah, yeah. I think I just you know, in terms of not in terms of the date, but at least you know start looking at that plan. The on street meters, you know, that's a broader issue. You know, we may want to add meters, so that's too good. Um, so the thing about the cross street here, you know, there's a woolly way. You know, every place around it has meters. That one street has no meters because it used to all be least park only. It's not least park only. Now it's a two hour meters. If you want to add meters, it doesn't make sense that one block has no so maybe we want to add meters other places. Maybe we want to extend you know, the, the limits of where meters are on the street and things. Yeah, so, so I think uh, in terms of what what meters we want to have, you know, the, you know what, what features do we want to have the on street meters, you know, because again a range of features we want to have. Uh, how many we want to put some limits. Uh, I think you're and on then come up with a separate plan for that and then then the issue of setting the rates, you know, well, you know that, that sort of have to get some basic layout that we can figure out. You know, but that is the end goal. The end goal is is for that kind of planning. You make you make you're onto something there. Yeah. No, I, I sort of capture what I was talking about the multi-space meter issue and sort of the municipal lot, CBS lot, and just how we talk about the fact that the community has to come through. And it's going to be completely redone. And where the multi-space meters, if you read the figure, and then all we have to do is change the numbers. So some of the sensor technology that we're talking about with these wouldn't necessarily be the same data collection. It would be slightly different with the animation that you get the multi-space meters. So we could do the kiosks now and change the parking config. Oh, OK, OK. Yep. I like that idea. I like the idea of you know, asking you guys to come up with, to share with us what the what the first stage proposal would be. Um, sure, I like the, the idea of a pilot too. Just to keep, I mean, I don't know if there's a, you know, keep that in mind. Um, but I also just want to be careful not to use up all the money on the the parking lot situation. And then we can't do any of the other stuff. Um, so yeah. I just want to be a little careful of that, you know. Uh, yeah, I think it should include. Uh, I, I feel the same way, Tony. I, I, I don't want to just do the, 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 the lot. I want to see the, like a more kind of systemic look at it. I mean, uh, just just to be so we don't end up having no money left. That's all. And in this, we have to look at this as a, a process. You know, it's not going to happen. It takes some time and. We look at it, but it, it, it is part of this larger question. Um, and the questions that Vinny talked to say, speak is the raises about maybe expanding it. Maybe that's part of what happens when you look at a transportation or parking demand study, that you know, you put up more meters. It, you know, you, uh, so, are you ready for a motion? I, I think so. You got something? Yeah, it's quarter to 10 of 9, 5 of 9. Really. So I, I'd like to make a motion that we ask the um, Public Works Department and the Treasurer to um, continue discussion about this and involve the Planning Department and come back to us with some recommendations. Okay. Or that we ask the Council to, do we have to ask the Council to ask them? No. Nah. no okay. No. I, I just, the recommendations about both the tech, the... What about next steps? Okay. Leave it open, broad. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I second that. So. Uh, any discussion? <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you very much, Mark. Uh, thank you for your time. Yeah. Um, 
you know, I look forward to helping in any way I can. I'm relatively local, I'm not going anywhere, so. All right, great. Make a motion to adjourn. Wait, oh, we got uh, more. Like covering some more. Yeah, stuff. No, just the, you, you've prepared some status reports on some of these. Yeah, I mean, I can just run through. I don't know. Hang on a second. Let me. Uh, <laughs> just through. Uh, and then I'll just go through the list. Wait, so that you're, you're trying to get prices from Stantec for more design work on Watertown yeah, Square? Yeah, that's just Matt's breaking the Stantec by consolidating recommendations from that right edge of the works, doing But it's moved, but there's yeah. been further discussions. Do you, have a, do, you, do you have any kind of target date when you want? All right. And then how, you, on Howard and Bacon, you were going to talk to Steve Magoon and them? But, and you said the dog park, something's happened? Well, yeah, we're, we're getting the prices. Okay. We're working on the project. And maybe some of the private incentives were sort of needed behind the program. Hold on, hold on. Um, you said that on the Howard Bacon, you just haven't had a chance to talk to Steve about that yet. Right. Well, uh, I, I think that Jerry would have the Oh, okay. So there, there is some yeah, conversation sure. happening about that. Okay. And then uh, on how and how park you said that the, um, you guys have done some kind of costing. Yeah. Are you working with um, Peter. Peter and his consultant on that? No. Alright. Alright. And what's the what's the thinking on like how that would proceed? We'll probably come back to you with a dollar number. It's probably the next step. We'll come back and say, with these changes, this is what you're looking at. Because the council of club, obviously, we had some points that, you know, maybe we don't want to be spending all this money to redesign the part that might be perfect. So I think the dollar number is going to be the real decision point in the discussion about how we're going to fund. Yeah, good, good point. Right, and he he also, you know, asked. I don't know if there was some thought about maybe if there was another location in town. And did you guys have that talk? Uh, okay. And um, how? Uh, anything like what's this, how's the road program going? How many did we say for this year? For a number of roads. Yeah. I think it was four or five roads, and you feel it was sort of the big one that was going to be infrastructure. Is that being funded through a grant, too? Yeah, it has some grant funding. And then some road money. Most of it is still part of that. There's still road money. Yeah. Most of it is still road money. Okay. Uh, I realize we're being videoed, but uh, I'm going to ask anyway. Isn't Haven't we had problems with Newport? Have, isn't that the company that we've had to redo a number of roads? Yes, uh, they, we, it's just a lot of management. I mean, it's a, it's a road program, there's a lot of variables, so I think our relationship has improved with them a little bit um, this construction season. Um, we did only have three bidders on Eatonfield Ave, and 
the afford this last buy, I think it was around three hundred thousand dollars. So when you're talking about problem contractors when you're saving three hundred thousand dollars, it's hard for us to So it sounds like maybe you're learning better ways to stay on top of them. And they're 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 signing different people to us to the Okay, good. And, that, and that, that particular project doesn't require any kind of innovations in the con contractor? The infill one's different just because of all the green infrastructure, which maybe the doesn't have as much experience with because it's such a new you know, element. So there'll be a lot of Projects that are for this year, but there were some there were catch up projects. There was, um, and what are those again? Lowell Ave was one, uh, Five Fields Street was another one, uh, Fall Fence was one that sort of had wrapped up last fall. So, so we're definitely going to get all the past years done this summer. We're probably going to Potentially break ground on, on the other ones. So we're good. And when we meet in October, we're starting all over again. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Aaron's on top of this. I just thought, I just didn't like the idea of it. Like that, you, you expressed to us how that every, the whole process started late, and I thought well, you didn't have as many things to choose from. Right. I think there was conversation about feedback, making sure that the system operates as well. Can I make a motion to adjourn?